The clothes we wear showcase our style and personality. But make no mistake, the clothing business is still a business. So we rounded up seven marketing gimmicks to avoid if you want to be a savvy shopper. First, just a quick reminder that we've already made a video on menswear gimmicks to avoid. That video focused on actual items to avoid buying, while today's list is about how clothing is sold to you. Ultimately, we want to be able to make informed decisions and live with fewer purchasing regrets. So let's get started with our first item. Number one, miracle fibers that wick away sweat and moisture. In the age of athleisure and performance fabrics, many manufacturers have jumped on this trend. The claim is that the fibers will wick away moisture and sweat, leaving you feel clean, dry, and comfortable. So you'll most often see this used to sell underwear, sports apparel, and even shoe trees. Of course, technical fibers certainly have their place in the 21st century wardrobe. They're quite useful when playing sports or going to the gym. What we're focusing on here is the claim that these fabrics will somehow magically banish unwanted moisture. How does that even work? I mean, where does the moisture get wicked to? What's really happening is that the moisture is absorbed by the fibers themselves, and any perceived comfort ultimately comes from how quickly the fibers feel dry again. Because no one likes the feeling of wet clothes clinging to their skin. This marketing gimmick has been in place for decades. Indeed, it's something that is so common that many people repeat it when talking about their favorite clothes, even if they don't fully understand it. Realistically, different people will like their clothes to perform differently depending on the situation. For example, pure cotton garments will typically perform well in an average climate, but will take longer to dry when hot or when exercising. Remember, a big part of comfort will also come from how well you take care of your clothes. And in the case of performance fabrics, they're unfortunately more likely to retain the smell of sweat over time since the fabric is consistently absorbing it, meaning that you'll need to replace these garments more often. And body spray will only mask the issue. So while there are definitely going to be times when you want your clothes to be more absorbent and dry quicker, just don't make all of your sartorial choices based on this performance claim. Number two, handmade products. When we initially hear the term handmade, it's easy to assume the item is fully bespoke or had extra attention paid to it. But in reality, the term handmade is not a protective phrase when it comes to selling clothes, which means it's truly difficult to define what was worked on by hand. For instance, a seamstress can guide an item of clothing through a sewing machine, but who takes the credit for the work in the situation, the seamstress or the machine? Handmade can be applied to many items of clothing in order to create an air of superiority. Because no one is going to proudly say, we pumped this out in a factory. And this provides a secondary point to remember. Handmade isn't always a universal sign of quality, as there are some items that look better when a machine is present. For example, a dress shirt will look much neater with a machine sewn side seams. These long, running seams benefit from the precision and reliability of a sewing machine. While smaller details can look elegant when completed by hand, such as shirt cuffs and collar. Something handmade is, by its nature, individual. So it's up to us, as consumers, to determine when the handwork truly makes a difference. This means a degree of education is required to understand what a handmade product looks like. The good news is, when you know what you're looking for, then you can sometimes spot a bargain, like when you're vintage or thrift shopping. And you can always ask questions of tailors and other artists and clothing makers to talk about their process and gain a deeper understanding. Number three, 100% luxury fiber products. Perhaps the biggest offenders here are the items that bear the stamp of genuine leather. Boy, we've all seen this one. But what does it actually tell you? Sticking with this example, leather quality is a huge spectrum with so many different types of leather skins available that will each have unique properties particular to that animal, including non-animal leather sources and leather lookalikes. Even when dealing with one type of animal leather, like bovine leather, different types of finished product can be created from their hide, such as suede, top grain, full grain, shrunken leather, etc. So saying something is genuine leather doesn't really tell you anything. And it's like saying this suit is made of real fabric. Chances are you've also seen the same with other luxury fibers like cashmere. 
there is a massive difference between the cashmere a mill like Laurel Piana produces versus the budget cashmere found in most retail stores. Annoyingly, you can also find garments with tags boasting 100% luxury fibers. But the reality is that they aren't 100%. They still have small amounts of the other fibers. Because for some strange reason, as long as a manufacturer hits a certain minimum quantity, they can still claim it as 100% luxury fiber. Unfortunately, this vague labeling system doesn't look like it's going to disappear anytime soon. Once again, it takes a little bit of knowledge and education to ensure that you know what you're actually looking at. Luckily, I know of a little place that will be able to help you out with that. Okay, shameless plug out of the way, let's move on to the next item. Number four, broad or vague country of origin references. We've discussed this before, but it deserves a place here too. Essentially, just because a mentor piece was made in England or in Italy, doesn't guarantee quality or brilliance despite the sartorial history of these countries. In fact, it's not uncommon for clothing with these labels to mostly be made somewhere else, only for the finished touches to be made in a more desired country. Plus, there are plenty of good quality tailors in areas like China, Vietnam, and Thailand, meaning that no one country owns a monopoly on quality. Number five, ultimate capsule wardrobes. Captive wardrobes have been popular topics for blog posts and videos for over a decade now. As retailers are quick to jump on things that people find popular, the capsule wardrobe has been a big marketing tool for a while now. It capitalizes on the desire to invest in less, have a clean, modern aesthetic, and reduce thinking time when dressing. On paper, there's nothing wrong with this, and it can be genuinely helpful to fall back on sometimes. The problem is that these capsule lists can get very samey. Blue and gray suits, white shirts, denim, white sneakers, dark tie, <laughs> and on and on and on. These lists are almost always on a one size fits all solution. Ironically, fitting almost no one in the process. And you'll often find that the castle wardrobes that are being recommended to you consist of nothing but products offered by a particular retailer. Instead of following these guides to a letter, Invest in a wardrobe that suits you. There's nothing wrong with using capsule lists as a starting point or inspiration. Just don't forget to infuse your own personality too. You'll get far more enjoyment out of your clothes. Isn't that the whole reason why we got into them in the first place? Number six, fluffy descriptors. This refers to the copy on websites, garment tags, and even the sales pitches of store assistants. When you remove all of the awesome descriptive stuff, what are you actually being told about the product? So much of marketing is just like what we're told in Mad Men. We're being sold a feeling, not a product. And we want to feel like we're making a good decision when spending our money. Separating facts from fluff can be a difficult skill to master, especially when it's happening in person. Ask yourself, what info am I receiving? How does it help me make an informed buying decision? And what info am I missing? Finally, let's cover number seven, trading on heritage and not much else. Abercrombie & Fitch, Burberry, Hunter Wellingtons, and the like are all brands that at one point were highly regarded for at least one of their signature quality products. But it's safe to say that what these brands put out nowadays often isn't the same level of quality as it once was. This could stem from a variety of factors, such as an ownership change, pressure from investors to cut corners, and so on. And while certain brands such as Keaton or Isaia still back up their name with quality goods, don't make all of your buying decisions just based on the logo. So, what should you look for when buying clothes? Fact-based information. You want to be told what's actually going into your clothing purchases. Are the choices being explained to you? A quality explanation would be something like, we use Safiano leather because it maintains an attractive appearance when flexed. A knowledgeable sales rep will understand what makes their product unique and won't need to rely on sugar coating to explain why you should consider their product. Don't be afraid to research before you buy either. That's why we have videos like our Is It Worth It series so you can get an unbiased look into what actually goes into a popular product. Honesty. Everyone wants to be known as the best, but not everyone can be, right? When it comes to the true best of something, there can only be one. Truly great clothing doesn't have to tell you it's great. You'll know because of the reputation and the ability to see and feel it. 
Essentially, companies that aren't kidding themselves also aren't kidding you. A good retailer will share info with you and not try to puff up their product to be more than what it actually is. Passion. There's a big difference between being high energy and truly passionate. People who care about the products they make want to share that passion with you, usually in a gentler, more engaging, and strangely addictive style of presentation. In stark contrast to shopping channel energy. Take it from me, Sir Billy Mays. It has the strength to take tarnish off this giant medieval sword. Companies that make generally good products respect you as a customer. They aren't looking to pull the wool over your eyes. Instead, they're fueled by passion and respect for their craft, not just trying to make a buck. Retailers spend countless amount of money to win over customers with their advertisements. With so much money on the line, it's easy to get caught up in the pitches they push onto the general public. Hopefully this guide will help you figure out what is truly worth your time and money. Do you have your own marketing gimmick pet peeves that you've seen retailers use? Let us know down in the comments. The outfit I'm wearing today is a double-breasted olive flannel suit and I am wearing a brown crew neck sweater underneath. My pocket square has a paisley design and it has blue, some orange, and also some light greens. I'm wearing a pair of brown Oxford suede shoes. For my fragrance, I'm wearing the Azzurro from our Roberto Ugolini collection. You can find this fragrance and other fragrances as well as other menswear items over at our Fort Belvedere shop.